Hello everyone. Look who shaved their hair, even though they said in the last video with the kind of yellow painted egg carton that they weren't going to shave their hair, but there was a comment in the comment section that said, no, do it, otherwise you're not... Anyway, there's a few other manly men that work in my office, you know, the real... Like, and I walked past a poster with Jason Statham and The Rock, and they're bald, just like me, from too much testosterone. So, um... I'm getting self-conscious now. There's people looking at me. People staring at me. Staring at my dome. Um, so, being a 39-year-old Generation Xer, I'd never heard of Juice World until he died at the airport. Um, and then I watched a video by a, a guy called Devin Tracy. He runs a channel called Atheism is Unstoppable. Thoroughly recommend it. Fantastic work. And he did a kind of one-hour tribute to Juice World and said what a shame and how sad it is that this young man, he was 21, had passed away. And he was like a kind of massive rising star with over a billion views and collaborations with Ellie Goulding and so forth. This Juice World guy is 21 years old. And he actually predicted in one of his songs, like he said, I think in the song Legends, like, I don't know about the 27 Club, I'm not going to make it past 21. And then he died at the age of 21. Anyway, uh, massive respect for Devin Tracy and his channel, Atheism is Unstoppable. But, and uh, had it not been for that really touching tribute and very respectful tribute and very mature uh, look at drug abuse and um, fatherly abandonment, the, the, the guy Juice World, I can't remember his real name, he's got a normal name, but uh, he was abandoned by his dad at the age of three. And he was raised by YouTube and Eminem songs and other strange things, all massive drug references. And listening to the album, I listened to the the album Goodbye and Good Riddance, I think it's called. And there's another one like Death Race, the 2019 one. Listening to all his big songs, you know, Lucid Dreams, Legends, Robbery, I'm Still, uh, Lean With Me. And listening with an extreme sense of melancholy and one thing i disagree with devon tracy is i don't think i mean of course the record producers and the music producers and whoever put together his album were encouraging him to keep taking drugs and to have that lifestyle because it's um you know it's that but from juice world's own viewpoint all i could see was a, a child killing himself committing suicide over 17, 18 years until he, he died at the age of 21, you know, father abandons him, leaves, doesn't raise him, falls into drugs at the age of 12, you know, falls into being very talented at music at the age of 15, um, gets massive worldwide attention at the age of 18, and is dead by 21. And I've listened very closely to the songs and um, from a musical point of view, they're extremely well produced, very original. And I really like the kind of distorted, over the top bass noise that he uses. It's like, uh, it's kind of like the modern version of the, the distorted guitars you'd get in punk music or, or the distorted uh, bass that Lemmy would um, play in Motorhead. He's using this distorted heavy bass beat for his song Lucid Dreams and also Hate You, and a lot of the other ones, it's like his distinctive sound. And I don't think, uh, this is where I disagree with Devin Tracy, I don't think um, Juice World was glamorizing drugs. I think that's all he had, you know. Um, I don't know the circumstances of his uh, single mum trying to raise him, but uh, probably she worked or she had her own issues with abu um, alcohol abuse or drug abuse. and. And so this poor kid was feral and he was different. You know, he's not like your average gangster rapper. You can feel and hear. And I think this is the, probably the secret of his success was the authentic, really true sadness in his voice when he sings or raps, you know, he does his, the way he speaks in his um, rap songs. There's a real melancholy, a real sadness and a real kind of mature self-hatred and it's bizarre and listening to his music it reminds me of that film from the 90s called leaving las vegas with nicholas cage where he moves to vegas uh, with the explicit aim 
to kill himself via alcohol abuse. And all of Juice World's music is drug references. And it's not drug references for the sake of, tee-hee, how edgy am I? That's a young man, a very talented musical genius, I'd go as far as to say, expressing his pain and, I guess, reaching out for help. And it was the music producer's job around them to notice, to say, look, you're, this is not good. You can't be smoking drugs and taking pills and prescriptions and Percocet and millions of other opiates he was taking. That's going to kill you. But because he was like the biggest thing in music for a long time, uh, absolute meteoric rise, I guess all the producers, all the money men, all the capitalists, nothing against capitalism, but all the people that were there to make money were like, yeah, let this kid kill himself. I mean, I've not seen an interview with him where he's not smoking a blunt. Nothing against blunts, but if you're doing an interview at nine o'clock in the morning in Sweden talking about your music, don't be smoking a big blunt. You know, like, I'm old enough to be Juice World's father. And on a few of his tracks, I, I welled up with tears because he's desperate. The reason he was so authentic about the drugs, he was desperate for someone to pick up on it, to take him aside. And one thing I agree with Devin Tracy, and it's a great video. I'm going to try and link it below. There's a scene in Lord of the Flies in the Devin Tracy um, Atheism is Unstoppable, Juice World is Gone video, where they're chasing a kid. They're all in the kind of tribal with spears, and they're chasing a little boy through the forest, through the jungle, and they get to the beach, and they're going to kill him. That's the intent. The kid's terrified, and there's a bunch of other 10-year-olds going to kill the kid. And there's like an army man, there's like an adult, 40-year-old, 50-year-old, and he's like, what are you guys doing? And I just wish someone... With the talented young Juice World had asked him, what the fuck are you doing? But no dad, who knows where the mother was, brought up by YouTube, brought up by drug references, numbing the pain. And I'm going to end this video, try and keep it under 10 minutes, but end this video on something quite deep. Who knows? Let's not go into God and all that bullshit, yeah? But on the kind of space-time world we live in, where you pop up into existence as a baby, a baby's or a little ba a child's first experience of the universe and this dangerous world is your parents. And babies, I guess, manifest, or we as parents, manifest a loving safe sanctuary for a little baby and your dad represents God and when your dad doesn't find you worthy enough or important enough or sacred enough to stick around to love you to give you that security that blanket of love and care I can't imagine it. Both my parents stuck together. They stuck with me. They raised me very well. I always knew every single day. I still know to this day. There isn't anything I could do that my parents would abandon me. Now imagine being a three-year-old and being abandoned. And then 18 years later, you kill yourself slowly over 18 years and no one around you stops you or they just encourage you. So RIP, it's good to see young people still talented. It's good to see that these age old problems are still moving people and still creating debates. So raise your fucking kids, people. Don't ever abandon your kids. That's all I have to say.